The first two pages are asking for um, graphing. You have to graph all of them. Component form, linear combination, magnitude, um, and direction. Whatever they gave you, I don't need. So in this case, they gave me component form. I don't, I don't need that, okay? Um, they've already given me component form. This is component form right here. Um, so component form is your XY. If they gave you anything else, like magnitude and direction, you would have to calculate your component form. If they gave you a unit vector, I and J, you would have to pull your coefficients, and that would be your, co your um, component form. But this is your component form. Uh, linear combination. Linear combination is basically your component form with an I and a J. You just split it up into two. So X, that guy times I, Y, that guy times J. So if you have your component form, you can very easily write your linear form. Just take your X and put it in front of I, take your Y and put it in front of J and put a plus in between. That's, that's linear. It's easy, okay? Uh, magnitude. Magnitude is your square root. So that is the square root of X squared plus Y squared. If you have it in component form again, take the square root of the sum of the squares. Think of Pythagorean theorem here. Same thing, all right? And then direction, direction is the inverse tangent of your uh, y over x, and that is absolute value. Don't worry about positives and negatives. If you put negatives in, it's going to give you a negative direction angle. You don't want that. Um, however, when you do the inverse tangent, it will always give you the reference angle, the quadrant one angle, okay? You have to figure out what quadrant you're in. If you are in quadrant one, you're gonna say whatever it is equals that tangent that you found, all right? If you're in quadrant two, you're gonna say 180 minus the tangent that you found. If you're in quadrant three, you're gonna say 180 plus the tangent that you found. And if you're in quadrant four, you're gonna say 360 minus the tangent that you found, okay? So you do have to know what quadrant you're in to know what angle measure you're gonna give me here for that direction, all right? So if we look at this first one, they gave me component form. So linear is just, they actually took the square root of 377, which is like negative 19.4. So linear would be negative 19.4 I plus eight J. Negative 19.4 is just that square root. Um, the magnitude. The magnitude is just going to be the square root of the square of 377 squared plus 8 squared, right? And that's actually a perfect root. 21. All right? If you square, square root, it just goes away. So you should have 377 plus 64. All right? Uh, direction. Direction is the inverse tangent of eight over the square root of 377. When you put that in, you get 22.4. What quadrant am I in? Well, I'm in the negative x positive y quadrant. I am in quadrant two, which means I need to say 180 minus 22.4 to give me 157.6 as my degrees there. So here I have those three answers, then I need to graph it. If you have it in component form, uh, you graph the component form. If they give you here's the start and here's the ending point, graph that one. So he may not start at the zero, zero. If they give it to you in component form, just start at zero, zero. Go left, 19. So if this is 5, 10, 15, 20, we're going to go about right here. And go up 8. If this is 5, 10, then I would go to about right here. And so it would look something like this. This is negative 19, this is positive eight. If you have it in initial and terminal, graph that exactly, okay? Graph the exact initial and terminal. So this wants the component form, the magnitude, and the direction of the resultant vector, okay? And they've told you two different vectors and what to do with them. You're literally gonna do order of operations here. So you're gonna say, five times my vector f 
minus six times my vector v. Distribute, if you, have a, if you have a scalar in front of it, it's just like distribution. So we would say negative five, negative 30, minus 654, and then subtract them. So negative five, <clears throat> oh, that's zero. Why did I write six? Negative five minus zero, that gives me negative five. Negative 30 minus 54 gives me negative 84. That's the first part. That is the component form. The second part is magnitude. Magnitude takes those and finds the square root of the square. Approximately 81.1. Magnitude is just that square root of the sum of the squares. And then direction is exactly what we did prior on the page before this. Direction is going to be the inverse tangent of 84 over 5. Again, negative, negative. I am in quadrant 4. When I do the inverse tangent, I get, um, I mean, quadrant, quadrant 3. When I get the inverse tangent, I get 86.6. In quadrant 3, I have to add 180. So I'm going to say 180 plus that to get my actual direction here of 266.6 degrees. The dot product is basically just my um, x value of my first one times the x value of my second one plus the y value of my first one times the y value of my second one. That's really all dot product is. So for this one, I would say the x values multiplied plus the y values multiplied. I get 63 minus 8, so I'm going to get 55 here. The measure between the two angles. So I do need to use my inverse cosine here. I do the dot products in the numerator and the magnitudes in the denominator. That's all I do there. So if I find those three things, I just plug that into my calculator. The dot product here, u times v, is going to be the negative 3 times 4 plus 4, negative 1. That's going to give me negative 16. The magnitude of u, well, that's the square root of the 3 squared plus the 4 squared. That's just 5. The magnitude of v is just the square root of 4 squared plus 1 squared. That's the square root of 17. So I have found all my pieces. You can put that exactly into your calculator in that formula. So I can say the cosine inverse, and in my calculator, I would, would open a parentheses. I would say negative 16 divided by, and I'm going to do a parentheses here, 5 times the square root of 17. That usually opens a parentheses there too, by the way, so just make sure you close those correctly. And you will get your 140.9 degrees there. So projection of u onto v. Uh, the projection of u onto v is going to be the dot product of those two over the magnitude of the one you are projecting onto squared. And then you are going to multiply it by the one you're projecting onto. You're actually going to distribute it through to each piece of it. So in this case, my dot product is going to look like this, negative 6 times 6 plus negative 2 times negative 1. Uh, my dot product here is going to be negative 34. Nope, not. <coughs> negative 34. All right. And the other piece that I need is the magnitude of the V. That's going to be the square root of 6 squared plus 1 squared or the square root of 37. Okay. So... When I plug all that in here, dot product, negative 34, over the magnitude squared. My magnitude is the square root of 37, and I'm going to square it. So those just cancel. So this guy's actually negative 34 over 37. And I'm going to multiply that through to my V. So the projection is going to be 
34 times the 6, that's negative 204 over my 37. And then negative 1 times negative 34, that's just positive 34 over 37. So that's the projection piece. This is the projection, okay? To find the other piece of it that you would add, you just take, so to find your W2, which is what you're actually finding, um, you just take U minus the projection, okay? So I would take U, the other guy, negative 6, negative 2, and subtract the projection that I just found. You do need a common denominator. Just multiply everything by the denominator. Multiply the 6 by the denominator. Multiply the 2 by the denominator. And then just subtract. In this case, when you do that, you get negative 18 over 37 and negative 108 over 37. So when you get a common denominator and do all that, you get those. Those are the two pieces. That's what you would add together. These two should add up to U. All right, component form for three dimension is the same as two dimension. Subtract your X's, subtract your Y's, subtract your D's. Make sure you subtract in the right order, all right? So if this goes from C to D, which is what it's telling us, then I have to take my D and subtract my C. So my first one is gonna be zero minus a negative eight. My second term is going to be one minus a negative one. My third term is gonna be four minus nine. That's gonna be the three terms of this three-dimensional. So zero minus a negative eight, component form is gonna be eight, two, negative five. That is my component form. Component form is easy. Magnitude, remember magnitude is the square root of the squares. Well, now I have three of them. So magnitude is just gonna be my eight squared plus my two squared, don't worry about the negatives, plus my five squared. Okay, approximately 9.6 when you do all of that. So magnitude is also the same. You just have a third dimension thrown in there. Graphing's pretty simple. Find your angle measure first. Positive is clock, counterclockwise, negative is clockwise, okay? So this guy is gonna move me counterclockwise to 135. That's starting here to 135, which is right in here, right? And so that's my first movement. My initial starting is here. It moves me here, okay? Positive counterclockwise negative clockwise, all right? That is my angle measure. That's how your angle moves you. And then your R, positive moves you toward the angle, negative moves you away from the angle, all right? So this is a positive R, which means I'm gonna go the direction that I just did the dashed line. And I'm gonna go three, one, two, three, here we go. That's my point, 3, 1, 35. Had it been negative, I would have gone the exact opposite direction, right? Had it been a negative angle, I would have started here and gone this direction. So negative angle would have moved me this way. A negative R would have taken me the opposite direction of the angle that I just had. So if this had been negative 3, I would have still found this guy, but I would have counted 3 this way, 1, 2, 3, away from it. All right, that's what I mean by away, towards or away. All right, the first one is, you can think of it like your magnitude and direction before. If you need it in rectangular coordinates, you are just gonna do R times the cosine of your angle and R times the sine of your angle. That's all you're doing here. So for this one, I would say three 
times the cosine of 270 and 3 times the sine of 270. Now, 270 is on my on an axis, so the cosine of 270 is 0, so this gives you a 0. The sine of 270 is negative 1, so 3 times negative 1 gives you negative 3. And that is the answer there. For the next one, you do have to calculate your R, all right? And then you have to um, calculate your angle. So if I calculate my R, it's just like anything else, x squared plus y squared, square root. So to figure out what my R is, I'm going to say it's going to be the square root of my 2 like this. So for this one, I would say it's the square root of 1 squared plus the square root of 3 squared. That's just 1 plus 3. That's going to be the square root of 4, which gives me 2. They have told me that R is positive, so I can leave it as positive 2. If it were negative, I would have to put negative 2 there. So I know my first part of this is going to be a 2. To find the other part, I can use inverse tangent. Inverse tangent of square root of 3, negative square root of 3. Well, don't do negatives. That's okay. Just figure out what quadrant you're in. Over 1. All right? The inverse tangent of square root of 3 gives you a 60, but that is first quadrant. I am not in the first quadrant. What quadrant am I in? I'm in the fourth quadrant, right? Positive x, negative y. Remember, fourth quadrant, you take 360 and subtract. So I actually get 300 degrees there. And that is the second part of my coordinate, the degrees. Those are my polar coordinates. So the distance here is your law of cosines. That's what the distance is, all right? So they have given you... Um, an R and an angle, an R and an angle, okay? And so think of law of cosines. You can think of this as A, and you can think of this as B, okay? And then your thetas, this is your theta, theta 1 and theta 2, right? So your distance between is going to be the square root of A squared plus B squared, minus 2ab cosine of theta 2 minus theta 1. All right? And you can always do the larger angle minus the smaller angle because it doesn't really tell you which one's first, so it's not like it's a directional thing here. So for this one, I would say it's going to be the square root of a, that's 4 squared, plus 1 squared, minus 2 times 4 times 1, cosine of 7 pi over 12 minus pi over 3. I just got a common denominator here. It's 7 pi over 12 minus common denominator of 12, 4 pi over 12, right? Equals 3 pi over 12. That reduces to pi over 4. You can either do that in your calculator under radians, or that's the same thing as a 45-degree angle. Those are the same, right? So in your calculator, you can do it whichever way you want. It doesn't matter. Even if you plug this in, it should give you the same thing. <laughs> plug in 7 pi over. But make sure you're in radians if it, if it does that. You need to convert it to degrees if you're not in radians in your calculator. So if you put all of that in, so if you convert this to degrees and it's in your calculator, you can put a 45 there. But you will get the distance between. It's approximately 3.4. So just subtract your two angles, and that's the angle measure you're going to use there. Plane traveling 500 miles per hour with a bearing of 120 degrees encounters a wind of 80 miles per hour from the southwest. What is the resultant speed and direction of the plane? By the way, if they said what's the resultant velocity, that term automatically means speed and direction, okay? So it can, it, can question, it can ask the question two ways. It can say speed and direction, which means magnitude and degrees, or it can say velocity, which means speed and direction, okay? So if it says velocity, it does not just mean speed. You also need to give me the direction. Velocity automatically indicates direction is involved. So for this one, I'm just going to do two separate ones and add them. My first one is 120 degrees bearing. Remember, bearing is from the north 
clockwise. So 120 degrees, that's 90 with 30 more degrees. That's what we're talking about, all right? If that is 30 degrees right there, um, my standard position starts from here and goes around. So in the fourth quadrant, I'm gonna do exactly like I would do before, 360 minus 30, okay? So for this first one, I'm gonna use 330 degrees as my degrees. And then I am just gonna do uh, R times cosine, R times sine, okay? So I'm gonna say, how fast was he going? 500 miles an hour times the cosine of 330, that's my X value, 500 miles per hour times the sine of 330. That is what my airplane is contributing to this, okay? That is what my airplane is contributing. Let's look at what the wind is doing. The wind, here's my wind. This says 80 miles per hour from the southwest. If they give you a direct northeast, southwest, it is cut directly in the middle of that quadrant, which means it's going to be a 45 just where, okay? Southwest is down here, right? South. Yeah. That's west and south, right? This is southwest. If it is from the southwest, it means it's going this direction, okay? So in standard form, I would just slide him up until his, he starts at the origin. So he's actually right here, all right? at a 45 degree angle. So standard position is gonna be 45 degree if I'm doing 45, okay? If I'm doing 45, it cuts it in half, it doesn't matter whether it's a bearing or whether it's the other direction is directly in half. So that's what I'm gonna use for how my wind is affecting it. So to my airplane, I'm gonna add my wind. My wind is going 80 miles per hour. So 80 times the cosine of 45 is my x, 80 times the sine of 45 is my y. And to get what's actually happening is I'm gonna add those two together. You can get them individually and write them out and add them up, or in your calculator, you can literally say 500 cosine of 330, close parentheses, plus 80 cosine of 45, close parentheses, right? And you will get a new vector here in component form, 489.6, negative 193.4. This is my component form. If it is asking for speed, in this case, speed is the magnitude. That's what it's been for every vector they have given you. If it's asking you for direction, it is asking you for degrees. Just figure out the quadrant. So for speed, I'm just going to do the square root of these two guys squared. This guy squared plus that guy squared. I will get approximately 526.4 miles per hour. That answers the speed question. For magnitude, I will do inverse tangent of 193, my y over my x. When I do this, I will get 21.6 degrees. This is a bearing of 21.6 degrees, okay? So what quadrant am I gonna fall in? Well, I'm gonna fall in a positive x and a negative y, okay? I am gonna fall in fourth quadrant here. They gave me my reference angle in the fourth quadrant, okay? So they gave me this angle right here is 21.6 degrees, okay? Everybody see that? They gave me my reference angle. My bearing starts at the top and goes down to it, okay? So you can't use your what you would normally do for your quadrants. You have to think about bearing. I went 90 degrees plus an additional 21.6 degrees here. So I need to actually add 90 degrees to that. That's 111.6 degrees, a bearing, okay? If they have from the horizontal, that is standard position, okay? If they say north of east, you know, west of east, whatever, west of south, then you have to figure out where you are on your quadrant. But if it's standard bearing, it is north clockwise. For this word problem, we have two tow trucks that are pulling on a truck stuck in the mud. The first one is pulling with a force of 635 pounds at a 51 degrees from the horizontal. The second one is pulling with a force of 592 pounds, 39 degrees from the horizontal. So these are, think of it as your two vectors that are affecting. 
Since it says from the horizontal, you can just assume that these are in standard position. So for this first one, we're going to do our vector with 635 cosine of 51 degrees and 635 sine of 51 degrees. For the second one, 592 cosine of 39 degrees and 592 cosine, rather, sine of 39 degrees. You'll so add these two together to get your resultant vector of 859.7 and 866.0. For magnitude, you'll do exactly what we've done, the square root of the two of those squared. And you'll get a magnitude of 1,220.3 pounds. The direction, because this is in standard position, you can just do the inverse tangent of the 866 over the 859.7, and you will get approximately 45.2 degrees for the direction.